Hi everyone, my name's Carla and I love doing cross stitch um, patterns and charts. So I thought I'd come on today just to give you a little idea of what I'm currently working on. I like to do um, lots of different type of cross stitch patterns ranging from very large designs to, to very small, you know, by different designers. And um, I'm currently working on some really beautiful designs and they're by Lavender and Lace, um, a designer called Marilyn Leavitt Imblem, and they're absolutely beautiful and very popular. Um, as you can see, they do look quite traditional. They've got some intricate um, patterns and also they have some lovely beadwork and there is actually quite a lot of beads on these patterns. So if you're a person that doesn't really gel with beads or you find beads too difficult to work with, then I suggest um, that you perhaps maybe try and find an alternative or you could even do the patterns without the beads and, and find another color to match uh, in threads. So basically, um, the first one I've started doing is this one here called um, Celtic Summer. And as you can see, the colors on here are quite bright yellow. Um, this is how I originally thought the, the DMC colors would come out. But when I went through the list of colors that I needed, uh, threads that I needed, I found that the, uh, the colors were not quite as bright as this, and that the actual um, translation of the colors onto the fabric were was uh, quite different, actually. So um, it wasn't exactly that I substituted the yellow for something else. It just seems that this is a poor representation of the, the original result. Now, a lot of people do actually change colors and they call them conversions. So what they do is they look at the original colors that come with the design. And there's actually a, a Facebook group where you can um, join and see what sort of conversions people have done, what colors have changed. And you can even use one of their conversions or you can come up with your own. So I decided to start with Celtic Summer. I have the four ladies ready to do. I have Summer um, Spring with some lovely golds and purples. I have Winter here and I have Autumn. So at the moment, the one I'm actually working on is Summer, which I'm going to show you here. And the fabric that they suggest for this particular design is um, is a cashel linen. Now, I never used cashel linen before. I've always used even weave or Ida. So I had no idea how this was going to turn out and whether it was going to be something similar or whether it was going to be something more difficult for me to to work with. So what I did was I um, ordered a sample of cashel linen and try to see whether it would work for me. Um, if you were to to look at the, the little holes on the fabric, you'll see that they're really, really tiny, um, tiny, tiny little holes, if I can just zoom in there. And you're probably thinking, how on earth do you stitch on such tiny holes? Well, actually, according to this fabric, it'll tell you, according to this pattern, it advises you to use two um, stitches over two holes. Uh, so basically, if you can see here, even though the holes are really tiny, my stitches are going over two holes and not one. So if I zoom in there as much as I can, you'll see that I'm not going over one hole. I'm jumping hole and going into the next, jumping hole and going into the next, jumping hole and going to the next. So the stitches are actually bigger. Now, the only problem with this is that if you count it wrong or I don't know, maybe you're tired and you're not thinking straight, it can be extremely difficult to to see where you've jumped and to actually count in the right places. Um, but once you've done a few stitches, it actually becomes quite easy. And obviously, when you've got an area done, you can then see what uh, you get you sort of get into the flow or the rhythm of it and, and it becomes easier. My advice would be not to work in the dark or at night time and also to make sure that you don't jump too far to a stitch because say these three stitches here going along 
Uh, it's very easy to count when they're close together, but if you want to jump um, with your thread down to here and start counting uh, one, two, three, as many stitches as you need to, it starts getting tricky. So my advice is to do a little area of, of stitching and then continue around that area so that you're always going to be more or less on the right track. Uh, particularly with this design, which does seem to have big gaps for instance there'll be um, an ascending line going up here there is a border that goes all the way around and you do really want that border to match so when you're coming down with your borders you want to make sure that they're going to align and you're not going to be one space off or that sort of thing that would be really really irritating and I would probably give up if that happened to me so this is Kasha linen, as I said, and it's a really soft, lovely fabric. It doesn't work for everybody. Some people prefer to stitch these designs on Ida or even weave. If you don't want to work with Kasha linen, that's perfectly fine. It is a personal choice. Um, you can use even weave, you can use Ida, and you can use any sign, uh, size you like. But bear in mind that when you change the the whole count of your fabric you also change the design size so if you were to stitch this exact same chart onto 14 count either you will find that um, it'll be exactly the same and you're saying well how does that work because you're using smaller holes well actually doing two stitches over two holes brings you to a 14 count stitch so it's exactly the same as a 14 count sized um, pattern but if you were to use a 16 count fabric or 18 20 22 count fabric you will find that there's a, the design size will change you'll have to reconsider the size of the fabric that you purchase I think you'll also notice here that there's a lot of gold threads um, they give a beautiful sort of effect especially on these swirly designs and these lovely little crosses going out along here um, this gold thread is called treasure braid and apparently it's quite difficult to find for some people um, but if you go into any of the facebook groups and ask you know wherever you're from and where you can get treasure braid from people are usually very very good at helping you find a stockist online um, i'm in the uk so there is a couple of online stores where i've been able to order my treasure braid from if not i would probably have looked up a dmc substitute or well, there's also another kind of metallic called cranic and some people find that good to use too i would advise trying a metallic braid first before committing to it completely some people find it's far too scratchy or difficult to use here for instance i have used two strands over the crosses and that makes it um quite prominent some people prefer to use just one strand so it's a little more subtle again it's preference the pattern calls for two strands uh, per stitch so it really does depend on what your preferences are and don't be afraid to change anything that you like I, my advice I mean I, I as this being my first one I wanted to stick to as much of the original design as possible, just so that I had a good idea of the size and how the design worked. It's very difficult to sort of get that um, impression when you're just looking at a small little card like this or pictures that other people post of their um, ladies. So unless you've actually done the design, it's difficult to see where the colors are matching and contrasting and going together. So I, obviously it's up to you but I wanted to do the design as close to the original colors as possible and I'll speak about that again in a moment personally because I want to make sure that I've I mean I think it's beautiful with the original colors I wouldn't have really wanted to change them because I think for me they represent summer and the lovely new blooms and leaves that come along so I thought it would go well and I'm quite pleased with the result but if I was to do summer again I might subtly change colors but I'd have a better idea exactly where they are by looking at my original um, chart so that's how it looks at the moment I've still got a fair way to go um, when it comes to choosing your colors um, these designs um, I think were actually 
printed quite a long time ago and um, obviously there is some um, accessories which aren't that easily available anymore there are dmc colors which are very commonly found there's also something called needle paints and i wasn't quite sure what that was nor could i find a stockist for it and maybe you can so if i just could show you here this little um section which shows you the colors you need and the symbols i think it's perfectly fine copyright wise to show you this you can see that for the needle paints i have substituted 2004 for a dmc 158 i've substituted 2001 for a 3042 in dmc so my pencil numbers are dmc because i've had to substitute now they're not very different from the original colors in fact there are charts that you can find online that will show you um, good substitutions. The other thing you can do is buy a DMC shade chart, and that's really good because it comes with actual threads on the chart and you can closely match your, your colors. Um, you can, of course, change the color completely, but I found that because I'm not used to the design and I wanted to keep as close to the original as possible, I did keep to original colors. Now, there were a few incidents when I went along that I actually made a few little changes. I um, decided that in this section here, in these four corners, it called for a, a, a color which I had run out of. So rather than go and wait, because I'm rather impatient that way, for the color to arrive, I decided to try a little bit um, of what I already had and see if that if I liked it, which I did. So you will find that this yellow here is completely different to the original pattern. But as long as you're consistent, I think it would look OK, rather than just using a, a different color here on these corners and then going to a different color here. And I think that might just mess up the overall consistency. But as long as you remember what you've changed and keep a note here, for instance, or a notepad, you'll always be able to refer back to it as well if you want to do the same pattern again. For the actual chart, um, it comes folded and it's quite huge. Now, for copyright reasons, I'm not able to show you the chart, but I can show you. I'm sure that there won't be a problem with showing you a little tiny portion of it. Um, so what I do is I never, ever use the original chart to mark off my work because for me it feels like I am ruining the the chart and if I ever wanted to stitch the same design again obviously my chart would be messed up with all sorts of marks on it with mark pen or pencil so what I do is I take a photocopy like this of each section that I'm working on and at the moment I'm finishing the top section here as you can see and what I do is I do a little bit of the stitching and I mark it off in yellow which is fine because once my design is done I can simply throw this photocopy away. Uh, it can be a little bit fiddly folding up the, the chart as I said it's quite large to get the actual sections that you need but with a little bit of um, practice you'll end up figuring it out and then you can just make as much marks as you need to on the on the photocopy. So that's how I get to work on my actual design. I'll also mention that um, I don't always stitch in this frame here, which is called a Q-snap. And again, it can be ordered and these little pieces snap onto the fabric. So it's like a little plastic frame and you can snap. You, you place your fabric over it and you snap these pieces onto it and it keeps it lovely and taut. I mean, it really does make this feel like an oil drum. It's absolutely brilliant. And the stand itself is called a, a Lowry stand. And I also ordered that online and it just holds it up perfectly for me. Now, there are points when I won't be using this, but for the moment, because I'm getting to a section where I'm going to start using uh, finishing this with the beads, I haven't put a lot of the beads in. Uh, I've placed some beads here around her arm and I've placed some beads here and a few here on the flat, uh, basket. But there is, it does call for a lot of beards and everywhere where you can see a little white space is where I'm going to have to place a bead. Now the beads are also running all along the borders. So I'm not sure I'm actually looking forward to that part. It seems 
that it's going to be quite a feat but obviously the end result is is what we're aiming towards and it hasn't actually taken me that long I've only spent about five weeks on this design so compared to some other designs that I do this one really is quite fast obviously it depends how how often you do it I, I tend to do an hour a day um, or a couple of hours um, maybe missing a day here and there but overall it is actually quite quick you can start wherever you like recommended start at the center of the um, fabric and work outwards or but you know make sure that you have the right size fabric so that you don't end up getting near the top and finding that you've got no space left above or below that would just be awful if that happened so all i need to do now to finish this lovely design off is to actually finish the last r here um another square of these up here another one here and then there's a lovely border which goes down here and then we'll have the lovely task of doing all the beads along the skirt up through the borders in each individual section there's going to be beading right along the top border as well beading and down through here so that's going to take me another couple of days so we'll see how that goes now I haven't started doing all these beads yet so I'm thinking actually doing them on my bed and I know that sounds crazy but uh, when I last tried to do these beads I think half the packet ended up on the floor so I <laughs> had to get down on my hands and knees and try to find all these little beads which are really difficult to to spot so I thought well if they they drop into the bed they're going to be easier to find um, but that isn't going to be the most comfortable place to stitch so I haven't yet decided where I'm going to stitch all these beads. But if you are doing something with beads and you have any suggestions, I'd love to hear it. That's about everything for the moment. So thanks for watching. And um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Do come back and let me know what you think. And if you've done it, any of these designs or whether you're thinking of doing any of these designs and let me know what you th thought of them or if you have any questions about them that I might be able to help you with, I'll try and answer. If not, I'll try and find out for you. Uh, so yeah, thanks very much for watching.